he actually wrote literary criticism means the critical views of various authors he wrote he wanted all the money for himself he didn't want to spend money at all convince them that he has not done a mistake it is all because of somebody else he is not involved so everything all the drama he does he was living like a person who doesn't have money at all but people knew that he was very rich hello everyone i am dr shalini professor of english Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Today we are here to discuss one of the prose parts prescribed by University of Mysore for first sem BBA. So we are going to discuss about rock called the miser. Okay, so the university has said that is uh, only the miser written by George Orwell, but the complete title is Rockle the Miser. So let us know what is there in this session. What we are going to learn in today's session. So first thing we are going to know about the author after that we'll have the summary of the short story okay so this is uh, one of the many short stories uh, george orwell has written okay this is uh, more or less it's in autobiographical mode like it is george orwell who narrates the story okay so let us see what is there about the author so we are going to learn about george orwell now george orwell was the pen name of eric arthur blair okay so that was his original name and his pen name was george orwell he was born in bengal he was born in bengal that is india okay so this is time when he was born was like uh, the british occupied bengal so that time he was born okay somewhere near to burma this uh, part of bengal he was born okay so he was an english novelist then he was an essayist he was a journalist he was a critic also okay so he was a journalist he used to write for many newspapers and in his uh, novels and all he actually wrote his uh, novels in the kind of satirical manner okay his one of the novels animal farm okay animal farm is actually a political allegory allegory means uh, it's a mock to the politics that were that was going on uh, during that time okay so somehow he had to mock that somehow he wanted to show that the practice what is going on the politics that is going on there during that time is not actually good so he wanted to show that and that is the reason he wrote this animal farm he did not want to refer to the leaders directly so he referred to animals and how politics goes on in animal farm he wanted to show that so it is more or less similar to the human practices that is there in the society that is the politics that was going on during that time in the society but he did, did not take the names of the politicians okay so his animal farm actually is a kind of mockery to the politics that was going on during that time okay so he actually wrote literary criticism means the critical views of various authors he wrote and also fiction the imaginary stories means fiction is nothing but imaginary maybe novels or novellas or whatever it is it is an imaginary part okay so that is called as fiction he wrote that also and he also wrote poetry okay then also polemical journalism okay so journalism that is he wanted to show that authoritarianism the satire and all in his journalism also okay so he was interested in that okay so he wrote that also his works were actually an opposition to the totalitarianism totalitarianism means a kind of dictatorship like everything is uh, concerned with the leader only so that type of uh, leadership he wanted to just oppose so he wrote about that and then authoritarian social practices authoritarian means only one person is the authority so he wanted to write about that he just wanted to oppose that okay he just wanted that practice to end so that's why he wrote in he used those in his works okay so this is george orwell okay so he is one of the greatest novelists and mostly he is a critic okay so he used that in his works only okay 
So yes, now let us move on to the summary of the short story, The Miser. George Orwell is one of the characters. He writes like it is uh, one of the incidents in his uh, life only. Okay, so George Orwell, he just wanders. He has taken uh, off from his work. Okay, so he goes and meets one of his uh, friends, wanders in his neighborhood, means he goes back to his hometown. Okay, so there he wanders there and he meets one of his friends, that is Charlie. Okay, so here, let me just tell you, Charlie was working in a bar. He was a bartender. Okay, and uh, George Orwell also had more or less the same kind of work. He had taken leave from his work because he felt he is working as a slave to a slave. Okay, so you can see those words like slave and he wanted to show that authoritarianism there. He wanted to show that he was a slave for a slave means he was more or less working under somebody's instructions which he was not at all happy with. Okay, so he uses a phrase slave for a slave. Okay, so he had taken off from that work and he came to his hometown. He came back to his hometown and there he met his friend Charlie. Okay, Charlie also was working as a bartender somewhere. Okay, so then he tells a fascinating story. Okay, so Charlie and George Orwell are actually very good friends. And whenever George Orwell uh, used to come back to his hometown, Charlie used to tell whatever happened all those years, like the years when uh, George Orwell was away. So that time what and all happened, all the incidents Charlie used to tell George Orwell. Okay, so he tells another fascinating story. So now Charlie has narrated a fascinating story. So what is it? It is about the death of Rockwell, a miser. So this miser actually, this Rockwell, the miser, he lived for a very long time. Okay, so he was there maybe for 60, 70 years. So he lived for a long time and he uh, died very recently, maybe three or four years back he died. So that story Charlie is narrating to George Orwell. Okay, so let us know a little about Rockwell. Okay, he was actually very rich man. He had a lot of money, but he didn't want to spend. Okay, so this, you know, a miser means a person who doesn't spend money. Okay, so he wanted all the money for himself. He didn't want to spend money at all. Okay, so he had a lot of money, but he lived like a poverty stricken man. Poverty stricken man means a person who is very poor. Okay, he was living like the person who did not have money at all. You know what he used to do? He used to use newspapers in order to get his undergarments stitched. Okay, he used to use newspapers for his undergarments. He used to take this uh, a gunny sack. Okay, in Canada you call it as goni chill, right? So the gunny sack he used to just uh, take it, the gunny bags you call it. Okay, so that he used to take and he used to get his trousers stitched. Okay, so he was living like a person who doesn't have money at all. But people knew that he was very rich. But the way his lifestyle showed that he was very poor. Okay, so he wanted to show off to people that he was poverty striking, but he had lot of money. Okay, so he was offered a chance to invest in cocaine smuggling business. Cocaine is a drug. Okay, so it actually has lot of demand in England. Okay, so it is easily available in France. Okay, France, Mexico and all, it is very easily available. Okay, so uh, you also call it as weed. Okay, cocaine also called as weed. Okay, in this uh, short story, there is a usage of this word weed also. Sometimes you call it as coke also. Okay, the short form of cocaine is coke also. It, it is also called as coke. So what he did, uh, he was looking for ways in which he can earn money. So one day there was a Pole, okay. So pole means a uh, P is always capital because a person from Poland is called as a pole, okay. A person from Poland or a Poland man is called as a pole or Polish also, okay. Is called as Polish, but here we refer to as pole, okay. A Poland student, a student from Poland, author refers to as pole student. Okay, so he comes to Rockwell and he tells, I want you to invest some money in uh, this cocaine smuggling business and uh, you will earn a lot of money. Uh, see, it is available for almost uh, um, very less money in uh, France and we will import that to England and we will sell it in England. So that is what he says. Then he also thinks, Rockwell also thinks that since we are smuggling, what if we are caught? So for that this poll student says we are not going by the proper channel. 
there are ways in which you can import also to England. But we are not going through proper channel. We are going in a very long way, but a stealthy way. The reason behind this is that there are already cocaine smugglers that who are established in the market. If at all, they come to know about the new people who are getting into the market. So that time, they would obviously come and attack on these people, the newly entered, the people who have newly entered the market. So the poll student says, we are going to take a long way. We are not going to take the usual way. So there is no way that we are going to be caught. Okay. So Rockwell actually feels, yes, I should invest. He is very greedy, right? Already he had money. He wanted to earn more and more money. So he is already greedy. Now he wanted to invest. Okay. So initially he shows some interest. Okay. Rockwell shows some interest initially to invest. But later on, he feels, oh, this much money will go. Like the partnership, what they thought of was 6,000 francs Rockwell will pay, 4,000 uh, francs the poll student will play, uh, pay. Both of them, they invest 10,000 francs and later on, they will earn money and uh, after that, they will share the money. Okay, so this is what they have thought. So now he starts thinking, oh, 6,000 francs I have to spend but he also thinks about the money that he is going to receive after selling this cocaine. So he thinks, should I invest on getting that money or should I let go of this offer? He just thinks for a very long time. So then he started agonizing about the money. Agonizing means he uh, has second thought also about the money. Okay, so he keeps thinking he doesn't want to act at all. He goes on thinking whether to invest it or not. Okay, so then what happens? He keeps thinking like this. So now, somehow, uh, one day he was convinced. Okay, every day this poll student comes, he talks to him, he somehow convinces Rockwell to invest the money. Then he just uh, builds up that greed in him, saying about talking about the money that he will be receiving later. Okay, so somehow he tells him to invest it. So he was convinced to buy 10 pounds of cocaine. So finally, they agree upon buying 10 pounds of cocaine. So this is in France. They wanted to import it from France, this 10 pounds of cocaine. Okay. So now he was convinced he is ready to give the money now. So finally, he agrees to give the money. But in the meantime, what happens? Every day, this poll student comes to Rockle's house. He convinces him and goes back. So there is a new person entering the neighborhood. So all the people will be observing what is going on in the neighborhood. Isn't it like somebody comes to your house very newly and they frequently start coming, then everybody will be observing. They'll think, yes, some new person is entering the neighborhood. So this way, since the poll student was frequently seen in the vicinity, so they think that something is going on. So this delay in buying cocaine, like the thinking, the convincing part, it took a lot of time, isn't it? So that delay in buying this cocaine made the news of this buying spread throughout the neighborhood. So now little by little people started getting uh, to know about this poll student that he was a drug peddler. Okay. So later on somehow they get the news also since he was visiting Rockwell's house. So they get to know that yes, this person is into drug trading. So people decide that. So finally, everybody comes to know that this person is going to deal cocaine in few days. Okay. So then the day after the delivery of cocaine, so then what happens? He somehow gives the money. Then finally, he gets the cocaine also delivered. Okay. So after this day, after the delivery of cocaine, his house was raided. So somebody in the neighborhood actually has gone and informed the police that there is drug that is found in Rockwell's house. Okay. So now what happens? Police, they come and raid the house. So that raiding scene is very interesting here. They come to the ground floor. He stays in the third or uh, the fourth floor probably. So he, they come to the ground floor. Then he will be thinking what has to be done. He is very tensed. Okay. That poll student is also there. So then uh, there is an assistant also for Rockle. Okay. So the poll student thinks, yes, I should leave by now. And when the police is in the ground floor, he actually leaves the place. Okay. So then the police reach the second floor. Then also Rockle is very confused. He is too confused what to do. Okay. How to, the cocaine is lying on the table. He didn't know what to do. Okay. So he just thinks he wanted to act fast, but due to tension, he was not able to act fast. Okay. So at that age, he's taking a lot of stress now. Okay. So he is too worried. So then the police reach the next floor. By then he gets an idea. Somebody suggests him. See, there are a lot of uh, cans of uh, this one, the face powder. Do one thing. 
just pour all the face powder out of the window then put all this cocaine into the cans of uh, face powder then you show that it is face powder only and it is not cocaine so somebody suggests gives this idea to rakul so he feels yes this is fine so then what he does by the time he opens the the tin and empty tins of uh, face powder police reach his place cocaine is lying on the table empty cans are there then rakul is sitting in front of the table like he is just sitting that side and the table is this side there is one more assistant to rakul okay so this is the setting over this is the scene there and the police enter the house his house was raided there okay so then what happens so yeah as i told you he fills the empty tins of face powder with cocaine few only he could fill others were lying outside okay so police actually enter to rakul's room but they did not even have a look at the table they didn't even glance at the table but rakul was already too worried now okay so he was too worried he didn't know what to do and rakul's uh, accomplice means the person who was there with rakul okay he actually said it is just face powder okay so they didn't even look at the table then the person who was uh, staying there with uh, rakul he just said it is just face powder police did not uh, seem to uh, show much interest in that but rokul just gives out a very uh, painful cry okay so he is already stressed he didn't know what to do the person who was there with him intentionally pulled the, the attention of police towards the the table okay so now what to do so rokul felt he will he is now screwed up he just gives out a painful cry okay so that time he feels oh no this is i am screwed up he thinks okay so that made police feel that yes he has done a crime okay so then what happens rokul and this pole were actually arrested okay so the accomplice okay so that is all that is uh, the pole student so he was also arrested okay so then what happens after they just took all these face powder the tins of face powder and uh, this one the uh, packets and all right so everything they take it and uh, when they take him to the cell also that is uh, when they take him to the jail also he starts telling them somehow he wanted to convince them that he has not done a mistake it is all because of somebody else he is not involved so everything all the drama he does but police did not believe also okay so somehow they wanted to screw him up they also knew that he is a miser then they were thinking that how come this miser has invested in this cocaine business he doesn't even spend the money so how was it possible for him to invest money in that okay actually this uh, pole uh, student and this uh, rockel was uh, placed in different places when while enquiry was going on okay so then before that they just wanted to get the testing done what is that powder that was there okay so they just wanted that testing to be done then they uh, send it to the lab so after they got the result upon testing the contents of the tin that is whatever was filled in the tin so they just tested it it was found that it was not at all cocaine okay it was uh, they found that it was not at all cocaine the person who went to get the report the policeman who went to get the report actually started laughing like anything okay so he was laughing because for no reason rakul is arrested for no reason he had to face all these stress and all okay so he was laughing like anything and he brought the report and gave it to the police who was there in the station so then they actually checked everything then they knew that uh, rakul he is not at fault they just release him and they also tell him what is the reason for he getting released okay so what happens here is uh, since they found that it was not cocaine they also tell him that it is nothing but just a face powder okay so it was not cocaine it was only face powder what has happened the pole the polish student had actually double crossed everyone double crossing means this word double crossing means cheating okay if i have double crossed somebody means i have cheated that person okay so he had double crossed everyone means he told rockel that he is going to give cocaine but what happens he did not give him cocaine he just gave him face powder okay so actually pol thought everything would go on smoothly and uh, he would get that 6000 francs but in between only they were caught but there is a doubt that the pol student only might have gone and informed the police also but that is not given in the story somebody from neighborhood is uh, told to inform the, the police okay or george orwell writes it in that way okay so there is no mention that who has informed the police okay so here the police student had cheated everybody the police the rockol okay so everybody he had cheated 
okay so then what happens rockwell was heartbroken he was happy that he was released but at the same time he was heartbroken heartbroken means he felt very sad not because he was cheated but because his money is gone like it was just a very less amount that he has spent out of the property out of all the property what he has it is very less amount that he has spent but still he feels that he shouldn't have lost it okay whatever he has lost is a great loss he takes that too much into his heart okay so he was heartbroken and he suffered from he actually suffered money loss okay so he didn't want to lose the money but he somehow lost it so along with this money loss he actually became insane okay insane means he became mad okay so he becomes insane he was not in his senses at all okay so he comes back to his uh, house like when he was released and he was sent back he comes back to his house he just uh, keeps on thinking about that only that incident that has happened okay so he keeps thinking about that he keeps talking about that so maybe for uh, two days i think he was uh, alive for uh, two days then his neighbors actually had heard him just scream cry laugh in the night and all okay so uh, they thought he has gone crazy he has gone mad probably uh, but uh, this all this happened not because he was being cheated as i told you before it was only because the money he had lost he actually uh, did all this he didn't eat properly like the eating pattern also changed so for two days he was very much insane he was almost like a mad person only okay but later what happened he could not tolerate this for a long time he died of a brain stroke okay so this entered too much into his head he could not tolerate all this loss so he died of a uh, stroke there okay so there was a brain stroke then he died in his uh, house only okay this is actually narrated in a very funny way okay but you should understand how much what kind of society was there okay so he could not face the society okay when he had to face his neighbors the next day it was not at all very easy for him because he was arrested for no fault of his okay so he did not do any mistake okay only thing is it he was very greedy okay and also should have understood he was not very clever enough to identify all this cheating what has happened here okay so he didn't know how to face the society he didn't know how to face the neighborhood so all he had to do was accept his mistake and he blamed himself for whatever mistake he has done and he died of a brain stroke okay so he was too much dejected so he died okay so this was the story that charlie narrated george orwell okay about the story of rockwell the miser okay so i suggest you have to read the original text so that you will get to know the comedy elements and the way george orwell has put it in a very comical way put that satire in a very comical way the way uh, people lived in those days how people used to cheat other people in order to earn money okay so how the society was there during those days so that you have to understand so i just suggest you to read the original text okay so this was all about rockwell the miser let us meet again with another essay part that is uh, left out by dr b r ambedkar in our next session okay so till then keep learning stay safe see you soon bye bye